Hey everybody, Jameson here. I want to show you a project I'm working on and take you on a little adventure which starts tonight with some samples that I'm firing. So I have a really great friend and co-worker at the office who is uh, leaving and the team decided uh, to gift her with something special and asked me to create a piece. And so what I've done here is I gave everybody the bullseye catalog and they each picked out their own glass color and we are fusing uh, together a plate that represents uh, the colors that we think represent her. And so um, it'll be a 16 by 16 plate. Uh, and so I'll show you the process of that. But here are all the different frit colors and we're gonna fuse this on French vanilla. And so I decided to run a test. Uh, I wanna see, I laid all of these out in the pattern that I thought made the most sense from a color spectrum standpoint for this piece. And uh, some of these are strikers and I wasn't, you know, I, there is the reaction chart for bullseye that shows what glasses react with others. And um, I'm just not that smart. <laughs> so I looked at it and it's just very confusing to me. Um, we wanted to fire this on French vanilla. I recognize there are some colors that will react with French vanilla. Turquoise is an example. So I'm firing two samples tonight because I couldn't decide, did I want those reactions or do I not? And so what I've got here is a piece of French vanilla on top of some Tecta to create a base layer with our spectrum of colors laid out. And then this other one is French vanilla on the bottom separated by clear. So we're not gonna get those reactions. And I'm just going to um, fire both of these as tests to see how do the colors develop and how do they look against that French vanilla so that I can make a final call on the 16 by 16, which is gonna use a heck of a lot more glass. Let's not guess, let's just fire some samples and see. So um, of note in the middle, I've got some gold purple striker. Uh, and so that the instructions for that, you need to understand your strikers. So um, some of them are uh, strike, you know, based on perhaps the top temperature, but the gold um, bearing, particularly this gold purple, has to be held at 1225 for two hours on the way up. If you don't do that hold at 1225, then it may not strike at all or the colors may not be as deep. These are all firing notes that Bullseye includes in their stuff. So I'm gonna fire this uh, with that two hour hold at 1225. I'm gonna take it up to 1490 then for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. And then uh, we'll see what these samples look like and make the call on the final piece. Okay, my samples are done and um, you can see, it looks like the only two that had a reaction with the French vanilla are the turquoise, which I knew, and Egyptian blue. Nothing else reacted with the French vanilla, but I kind of like the depth that you get with the clear on top and it's probably hard to capture in the video, but you do get uh, a little bit more depth and I think that that's kind of a cool look. So. I think I'm going to go that route instead. And um, the other thing that I learned by doing my um, samples here are that I don't really care for the uh, 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 order of colors right here. So this is gold purple. This is the one that strikes. And then this was neo lavender. I think I'm going to switch these two. I think I'm going to put the neo lavender here, the gold purple here, and then move on down the line. So uh, another good reason to, uh, to have done samples. So now that I know what kind of look I'm gonna get, I'm going to start constructing the full 16 by 16 platter. Okay, so what I have now, I've put, you know, because I decided on my construction being a French vanilla sheet on the bottom with Tecta on the top, I've dusted a little bit of clear powder and uh, this is 16 by 16. So I marked basically uh, at the eight inch mark with just some kiln posts there. Uh, what's the middle of the sheet so that as I begin constructing this, uh, I know uh, what the middle is because I've got 15 colors here that I'm laying out and uh, this pink right in the middle is the middle color. So as I'm laying out these colors, I'm gonna start in the middle, therefore I need to know where my middle is and uh, build out from there so that I have relatively even coverage. If I start from left to right, uh, my luck is I don't plan that accordingly and I end up with uh, a big gap on the right hand side. If I start in the middle and work my way out uh, each color at a time, then I should end up with a fairly even pattern. My goodness, there's dogs and barking and lawnmowers and all kinds of noise out there. But uh, here we go, we're gonna start building.
Okay, so uh, you saw me lay that frit down with my favorite tool, a spoon here. I also have a bench scraper, so I was using that to kind of get the lines lined up a little bit better. And then what I'm gonna do, um, let me show you here. This is the inspiration. There is a painting that was at a doctor's office that I just thought was really cool. And so this is the inspiration piece uh, for what we're doing here. So that's why I chose a French vanilla background. Obviously the colors uh, across the palette are very different, but that's because as a team, we each two chose our individual colors that we wanted to use. And so I'm just making that work. But um, what I thought would be nice, I could leave the frit kind of haphazard like I've got it, um, but I have uh, was doing some circle cuts and have this, uh, and so to get a little bit of a, a taper to each end of the frit color to mimic that painting, I'm going to use this as a little bit of a jig, and uh, I'm gonna go back to my, my kiln. I'm just gonna kind of set that in between each color divider and try to uh, move the kiln, or excuse me, move the frit on each side of my little jig here uh, to try to get a little tapered edge. So I'm not gonna film that because I really don't have a great setup for the camera over there, but uh, I'm gonna give that a shot here next. And I'll just use a variety of tools, uh, you know, some tweezers if I need to move some pieces. I've got a paintbrush, uh, so that could move some pieces. So I'm just gonna go over there and experiment and see what I need to do to try to, to, try to shape those ends a little bit to a taper. Okay, so that worked fairly well. And then some of it was just freehand with a paintbrush. That's what worked the best for me uh, to kind of taper those ends. So I'm pleased with that. A couple of comments here. I'm leaving the edge a little rough on this side and a little rough on this side because I kind of like the organic look. I tried to stay about an inch away from all the sides because I really don't wanna to have to do a lot of cold working and I'm hoping this amount of frit doesn't create too much displacement of my glass. So that's a little bit of a risk and kind of fingers crossed on that. I could technically dam this, but that's just a lot of work and I don't know that I need to or want to. So I'd rather just kind of take my chances here. I think what I'm gonna do now, most of these are opal colors, the uh, aventurine blue on the far left and the aventurine green here toward the right are technically uh, transparents, but they, they fire uh, just about opaque. So most of the rest of these are opaque, op opalescent colors. I'm going to look through my frit stash. I used uh, coarse frit. I'm going to see if I have any complementary colors that uh, would give a little bit of dimension to this, uh, just a little bit of extra color, but probably in kind of a medium frit and almost just like a little shading. So I'm going to just look around and see what I have. One note about this one in the middle, this was an orange and white streaky glass that I crushed up and made my own frit. So I used two different sizes. I laid down some of the bigger pieces and then uh, I used my frit sifter when I crushed that up and I used uh, what's kind of more of a medium then on the top to give just a little bit more texture uh, to that one. So now I'm gonna go raid my stash and see what else I have to maybe do a little bit of highlighting in here, not too much. And then, uh, and then we'll talk about firing schedule next. Okay. Here we are. I'm just warning you, I am not going to list the colors that I used because I used so many colors. I mean, there's probably 30 different colors on here. So if this is something you wanna tackle on your own, then um, please be creative and just decide your own colors. Uh, for the most part, I added some variation to all of these and I don't even remember now what all of them were. Uh, like on the turquoise here, I had some um, light, adventuring, no, excuse me, uh, light aquamarine in transparent. So I added that uh, to some of like the neo lavender. I had a light neo lavender powder. So I added a little bit of that um, to the, you know, orange. I added a little pumpkin to the canary. I added a little sunflower, the spring green. I just added transparent spring green to, you know, the woodland brown. I added some sienna or cinnabar or whatever. So you get the point. I just kind of looked you know, one shade lighter or darker, kind of what did I have on hand, and just added a little bit of frit here and there to kind of fill in and hopefully give it some depth and dimension and interesting um, eye-catching uh, uh, variation. So there you go. Now, for the firing, I'm going to take this at a ramp, uh, probably 400 an hour up to 1225. I'm gonna hold for two hours. I need to do that because this gold purple needs to fully strike. And then uh, that also gives me a great bubble squeeze. 
So I might go to 1150, then slowly to 1225, and then hold that for two hours. I'll, I'll calculate that here in a bit. Uh, then from there, I'm going to go up to 1490. I'll probably hold it for uh, 15 minutes, and then I will take it down on a ramp to 900. I'm going to hold this long just because I'm there's a lot of cry factor in this, so I'm probably going to hold this uh, at an anneal for four hours, and then I'm going to very slowly anneal down from there. So um, anyway, here we go. Let's close it up, see how long this thing takes, and see what it looks like when it comes out. All right, it's done. Great fuse. Um, I had one piece that jumped off there. Uh, we'll just call it a beauty mark. I don't know why Frit does that. It, I mean, it tends to move. I don't know if it's just it rolls when it was... Um, uh, fusing. I, I don't know, because in this case, I didn't use any adhesive whatsoever, so this was all just dry frit. Uh, no hairspray, no glue, no glass tack, nothing like that. I sometimes think that uh, those things can, uh, you know, kind of gas off or, or bubble or boil or something like that, you know, might move some frit. In this case, it was all dry, but we're just going to call that little freckle a, a beauty mark. So, uh, now I'm going to get this thing cleaned up and we're going to go into a slump. I'm going to take this on a very, very slow slump. Um, the ramp schedule I'm going to use is probably just going to be 100 degrees an hour uh, up to about 1150 or so. I'll take a look at the instructions for the mold, but uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it slumps. Well, here are some photos of the finished product. I got so excited to take it out of the kiln, photograph it, and get it wrapped up that I forgot to do a closing shot video. Uh, so here's your photos. I'm just delighted that 15 people could choose different colors and have it come together to be such a cohesive thing. I think that that's a testament to the bullseye glass. It's just beautiful stuff. Now, some people may ask about food safety here. I think that this is going to be mostly decorative. If she does want to use it for food, I'll suggest that she uses it dry or, you know, maybe puts a piece of wax paper down. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Please follow me and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this.